pleasure to be here again with Louis David. Hello. Uh, we met three years ago, thanks to Wisher, and we were both uh, surprised at the Collaborative Academy, and many things have happened since then, no? Yeah, exactly. And um, when, when you started preparing that fest, the, the phrase of the track was the, the peer, the platform, and the corporations. It sounds like a kind of a cowboy movie, right? And uh, everybody's asking who's Clint Eastwood and who's the ugly. And like in any uh, good movie, it's a story uh, with love, hate, alliances. And when we started, it was a very enthusiastic uh, moment because uh, collaborative consumption platforms, they were gaining attention, they were uh, increasing. Um, collaborative projects such as Wikispeed were also getting more and more attention and rela realized. And a few corporations were trying to make sense about how they would get involved into what was labeled as a new consumer trend at that time. And there were very few of them. And a lot of them, they just looked at it either saying that it's not our business or they will never come on our market. And that was a feeling that we shared during the first We Share Fest in 13, when we had that workshop that was um, named Collaborative Economy and Corporations, Friends or Foes, remember? Mm -hmm. um, so after that, there was a lot of uh, work done by, of course, companies, but also analysts like Jeremiah, who presented, and he was one of the first to issue a report on uh, how corporations could seize that opportunity. And that was a kind of tipping point in the collaborative economy scene, it moved from a consumer uh, perspective, people that are now consuming differently, to a business per perspective, where companies were trying to make sense about how this new competitive landscape uh, works. The, the months after the second we share first, there was quite of a questioning phase the very fast rise of collaborative uh, consumption platforms, their valuation lead a lot of, led a lot of questions about regulations, competitions, value sharing, etc. And when we met last year, it was the time of controversies, and it was not exactly the same discussion that we had the year uh, before. So. The subject was, well, it's a major competitive evolution. How can we make the most of it? And there were more and more companies that were involved in last year We Shall Fest, and that year we can see that there are even more. Uh, from that time, we saw, and Jeremiah showed us a lot of examples of companies that are partnering with collaborative economy platforms. A lot of corporations also started operating their own platforms, facilitating people and helping people to share their products, to design and manufacture their products. And there was a, a new kind of corporation <coughs> that appeared in the scene. Traditionally, corporations were legacy businesses but we see more and more appearing the new corporations, digital giants like Google and Amazon that are now more and more directly or indirectly involved in the collaborative economy. So now the focus on corporations moves from or enlarged from traditional corporations to new digital corporations. And it was at that time that you uh, published your Pentagross report that you presented uh, last year, an analysis of 50 companies, very fast-growing companies, and that Without Model published the book Open Models. So we moved from enthusiasm to controversy, and now perhaps it's a way kind of transition, right? Well, we talk about transition now, but our belief, and it was clear on Monday we held the first Wisher Forum, with the companies partnering with Wisher, 
can make, among others, Wisher and uh, the Wisher Fest possible. And what we realize, it's a new, a new common sense emerging. Uh, the kind of common sense that we all realize that this provides an opportunity to be more efficient, to generate abundance, that it can tackle sustainability problems, and that the challenges that corporations are facing right now cannot be resolved in traditional ways, but probably they have to learn and they have to experiment on this collaborative space. Well, so this year, when we designed the business transformation track, we've been creating like three lines of thought and one industry as an example. We're gonna talk during these days about new forms of ownership and governance. There's a contradiction among distributed assets, distributed capacities, and concentrated uh, property of companies. So we're going to have Robin Chase already showed us how to do this peering, taking the best of peers and taking the best of corporations. We're going to have Enric Doran on the other side exp uh, explaining us how to create a whole new economy from scratch, creating your own con in a cooperative way. We're going to have a session about how cooperatives are transforming to get engaged with the collaborative economy as well. We have a second kind of uh, thought, which is uh, what are the sustainable business models of the future? We know that platforms are eating the world. We know that this is not a game of businesses, but rather of ecosystems. We know that scale is very important, but scope is getting more and more important, advantage of scope rather than scale. We're gonna have, we've listened to Jeremia, think about how all this is moving, how corporations are moving into this space, but we're going to hold sessions on entrepreneurship. It's not, not only uh, entrepreneurs are only outside the company, but you can have entrepreneurs inside the company. We're going to talk about alliances with uh, Carmel, and we're going to get the experience from the other side, from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, and how, about how they've gone on with their own alliances. The third track is about new ambitions and new management processes in corporations. What we're experimenting is that we as citizens, we have new demands, we want corporations to be contributive, we want them to be transparent, we want them to share whatever value they're generating from us, and we want to put the question whether a new standard of management is emerging. We're gonna have for that Jeremy Heymans from Purpose, we're gonna have Alessandra Rofino taking about a very uh, precise experience on that. We're gonna have people about the circular economy. We're gonna talk about self-managing organizations with Free Lagokov. And lastly, we're gonna have these big, almost public corporations such as La Poste and the train system in France and Maif, a very huge cooperative insurance company, explaining us how they are facing these new challenges. Last, the fourth track you can see within the business transformation program is about mobility. Mobility is one of the industries in most rapid transformation. If you want to go right now from point A to point B, you have more choices than you ever had, more variety of things. So we're gonna have, and you'll have the chance to confront ideas with uh, Yves Triloid from uh, SN, SNFF, I cannot pronounce it in French, uh, the railway system. We're going to have Uber, we're going to have Blablacar, we're going to have Drivey, we're going to have the legacy companies discussing as well how mobility is changing. Re yesterday we took a, a shared Uber with Tomas de Lara and we realized Uber is not only a, competitive, a competitor to taxis, but when you share it, is a competitor to Metro, because you can get from two euros from point A to point B if you share an Uber car. So we've organized three business transformations, not a little bit. Yeah, it's not yet the time for synthesis, but when we were preparing and started discussing with the, uh, uh, the people that are giving speeches, uh, we conclude that there are three main uh, transitions that corporations are undergoing. Uh, model, transition of model, boundaries, and impact. 
The first one, transition about uh, model, is that Jeremiah uh, really explained that from the ownership to service business model, but that challenge that face corporations is to simultaneously investigate those models and to continue exploiting their dominant model. And that ability to, at the same time, explore new models that may sound contradictory with their old models is a key uh, skill that they probably need to develop. The second change about model is that corporations are more and more leveraging their existing assets. They're no longer um, copying collaborative conception or collaborative economy startups. They're doing it their way, leveraging their assets, whether they be technical, intellectual property, data, etc., to find a new way of defining uh, their new model. The second transition is about boundaries. Corporations are pretty used to manage clients and suppliers, but it's very different to deal with communities, peers, platforms, etc. The boundaries are blurring and the need to interact with people that actually create the value and those people, they are outside the company. They're not uh, employees or business partners. And the third one is the impact. More and more uh, consumers, regulation authorities, and general public urges cooperation to face, at the same time, social, economical, and environmental impact. And that's a big challenge for corporations to meet those three type of uh, value production at the same time. So beyond profits and beyond jobs, what would be the future of the next generation corporations? I think we need someone to help us answer well, the question. We've got the best person we could uh, think of to help us on this new environment and to introduce this track. I would like to welcome on stage Lisa Gansky. Lisa Gansky. As you may all know, or you probably all know, but uh, I have to say Lisa Gansky kind of a godmother of the, the collaborative movement, of the collaborative economy, the collaborative society, I would say. Her Twitter handle, it's instigating, and that's what she does all the time. She's done that since she was a small kid, I know. Instigating, that's the way you were called in your family. She's been a serial entrepreneur. She's been a, an author of the best-selling uh, book and one of the founders of the th collaborative thinking, The Mesh which you might all have read, or consultant, because it's got a directory. And she's one of the persons, and I've uh, listened to her, explain her epiphany. He built the first photo-sharing digital service, Ophoto, and then sold it to, Soda, to Kodak. And when he went out of the company, she realized that she could build Ophoto three years after by 3% of the cost that she had built it on the first time. So she has witnesses, and she's been very active on this whole digital, economic, social transformation. And it's really luxury to have her as an advisor to wish her. It's really a luxury to have her with us right now. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much, Javi. Uh, and thanks to all of you. I'm really looking forward to sharing We Share in the next few days together. So um, I hope that we meet and talk. I know you have a whole session on that, which I'm not going to miss, but I would like to ask you, uh, I remember in 94 when the internet appeared, the World Wide Web, we thought that necessarily the world would become more fair, more distributed, more decentralized, and now we realize, and Jeremiah has showed us the feature, 1% on the platforms on which we collaborate, now we have the blockchain. The blockchain holds the same promise of decentralization, distribution, fairness. Uh, you're, I know you're very much into that. Do you have the same feeling we had at the time? 
so, so by way of confession, uh, I, we, we started in 1993 by, quite by accident what turned out to be the first commercial website. Um, and in the beginning, we, we played the movie in our head of what we thought could happen. Super excited because the world would be flat and there would be decentralization and so many uh, things could happen that we, before the maker movement, we didn't have the language that we have today. But we envisioned many things to happen. Of course, we thought they would take five years. They took 22 years. Uh, so now I drink less espresso uh, and more herbal tea because I know that things take a little longer sometimes. But it definitely for me, one of the things that has happened over the last 15 or 20 years with all the innovation around uh, the internet is we've been missing some key component and that was actually uh, a way to authenticate and enable real trust between people without having the intermediary. Uh, blockchain, when I started to really understand blockchain, I was, like I had all the same, with a little less caffeine, I had all the same uh, physical sensations of, wow, this, is, this could be huge. This is really uh, what was missing from the first generation. And so I'm particularly enthusiastic and very involved um, now in, in because I believe that blockchain is effectively the gateway to a collaborative peer-to-peer -peer society. So I'm, uh, that, that's how I see it. Um, if you want to continue that conversation for which I'm pathologically enthusiastic, uh, you could join me at 4.30 in the studio and we'll dive in further. Yeah, um, so blockchain is really inspiring and it relates to how things occur. But if we talk now about the why and the results, the impact of those initiatives, uh, we, we see that more and more social, economical and environmental impact are blended into the demands that are made to corporations. You have a, a huge experience of uh, companies big small, getting bigger, etc. cetera. Um, how do you feel about that new, uh, uh, new evolution of demands regarding impact, first? And second, um, in, the, in the same time, we see that uh, practices of management are evolving towards transparency, fairness, uh, decentralized power. Uh, do you feel that uh, a kind of uh, window dressing for people like us that like to think that the world is um, having that move or is it real? <coughs> Will it grow? And you may use your uh, godmother voice to answer, right? I, could, yes. <laughs> I, I was joking before when they called me the godmother. <laughs> um, you know, I think that uh, these questions are really really big questions. Uh, what I would say is one of the things that I've realized uh, working with a lot of corporations and governments over the last five or six years is that um, the industrial revolution wasn't just a concept that we could say, okay, we're gonna apply it to this thing, but it actually shaped the way that we saw ourselves, uh, how we move through our life, how we plan things very specifically and made a little idea in our head and we went down this track. Careers, the way we were managed in companies to have a little career inside, the way companies created strategies, and also, of course, uh, vertically integrated companies. Like my joke with Kodak is they actually own the cows to make the bones, to make the auger, to make the film that ultimately no one bought. And so we see a lot of that strategy being rapidly demolished because it's not working. The companies, I think, uh, uh, I, some, when I was at Kodak, I had a French colleague who said something to me in French, I'll spare you my impersonation of French because it's horrible. Uh, but he basically said, I'll, uh, the sight of the guillotine clarifies the mind. And I think that that is true, that um, when more and more companies are seeing, as Robin alluded uh, in her presentation, that 
the Inter Intercontinental Hotel took 65 years to do something that Airbnb took four to do. These these peer-to-peer -peer networks scale in ways and can operate in ways that we haven't seen before. But also, um, the other thing is that when a superstorm Sandy came to New York or uh, the Olympics come to London, the Intercontinental Hotel and hotels in general can't grow hotels really quickly and, um, and create new rooms. But Airbnb and two-sided platforms have a capacity to meet demand with supply in ways that we haven't seen before. And in a world that is um, uh, unknowable climate, especially, and other uh, challenges that are before us, the ability for us to reach into communities to look at each other as assets, as, as creators for solutions in ways that we haven't been able to do before is really exciting. And so um, for me, I see the resilience of um, communities, governments, brands, and, and our lives coming from these peer-to-peer -peer models in a collaborative society. Um, and then big corporations, from my perspective, are actually um, reluctantly embracing them on one side and on the other side are absolutely opening themselves to, up to realize that they have to become minimally porous. Um, the, the way that I say it to them is, the best people to solve your biggest challenge don't work for you. And here's the really crappy part. They never will. Okay. So how are you gonna solve that? How are you gonna embrace the community and how are you gonna build trust for those of us that think you're gonna steal our ideas? That's the challenge. In 10 seconds, we don't have a crystal ball, but we have a crystal bottle. And I would like to ask you, let's think about the Wisher Fest 2018. What will the theme will be? Do we have a new generation of collaborative uh, uh, companies on stage? OK, now I'm going to be the looking the crystal ball. I think there's two things, because um, I have very little time. One is. Uh, I'm particularly, I would say, hopeful that the first generation that we've seen that's funded by venture capital, where the value created by these platforms is often by all of us, but the value, how it's shared, is, is typically from last century's business model with venture capitalists and founders. We're seeing early shoots, like early signals for companies starting to find new ways just Park in the UK, crowdfunding some equity, Reddit distributing equity to communities, and other sorts of things like that. Cooperatives, absolutely, I'm a huge fan of cooperatives. So one thing that we'll be looking at in 2018 is how much progress we've made in uh, the value, the relationship and balancing the value created with how the value is shared. The second quick thing I would just say is I think blockchain is the gateway to our peer-to-peer -peer society and that we're at the cu in the cusp of creating a new social operating system. And I think we're gonna be talking a lot more about all of our failed and successful experiments and the great mess that we've made but the great new opportunities that we've discovered uh, between now and then. Thank you so much, Lisa. We'll finish Thank here. You. Enjoy the business transformation track. Thank you. Thank you.